Happy now, all is now. It's the gift of being a present. The fresh say signing back in. You're putting out my perspective into the cloud of the collective to expand the collective consciousness. You're not tuning into the mind of an algae, the moon slash Aries moon. And it is Gemini hours. And it is also Mercury day. Okay. So with this, today, I just want to go ahead, go ahead and go and talk about why I didn't necessarily upload for the moon being in Capricorn, you know, because, you know, it's because the, what's it called? I was tending to my creativity. All right. So, uh, I feel like, you know, I've been going hard these past couple months so it's like plus on on the internet but you know it's like i'm just more tending and embracing real life you know being more in the real world type shit you know with the people that are you know that i'm associated with you know and you know my business you know i was tending to my business moan was in Capricorn and I was tending to my business. So that's basically why I didn't I didn't upload. I was tending to my business. I was I was playing out the energies. So basically whenever I don't upload, <clears throat> it's cause I'm playing out the energies. Alright? In real life. Alright, instead of speaking on them. Okay? So just being influenced by them. Alright? So yeah. So what's going on now is we got moon in Aquarius. And as I speak, it is conjuncting Pluto. Okay. So it's uh, freshly in Aquarius. Okay. Meaning it is sextiling the sun. <clears throat> it is April 3rd. Okay. So... I think I'm going to actually, so when we do the, when we do the numerology for the day, you know, it's, it's just going to symbolize, you know, with this, I'm going to get into the numerology later, but with this, <clears throat> this is a moon sextiling the sun in Aries, okay? So, with with it with it uh, uh, conjuncting Pluto, we have this energies to want to you know uh, react and respond to our taking power and control in whatever house we got Aquarius at. Okay, so you might find like you if you got Aquarius in the sixth house, you know. You find where you're taking power control over things. You will feel the energies and the emotions to want to take power control over your health and your day-to-day -day routine at this time, you know? And this is, with Pluto being in Aquarius, this is the age of Aquarius, you know? So this is how we symbolize it's the age of Aquarius, you know, because <clears throat> wherever Pluto is at, you know, that's where you know, it sort of cha changes and transforms things, you know, uh, similar to Uranus in a way, where there's this energy to want to change and transform and rebel, you know, so, yeah, um, Moon is also, yeah, so with it, sextiling the Sun in Aries, this is the Re the uh, reactions, okay? So the sex house, the opportunities, the 60 degree angle to react and respond towards our actions, okay? So with the moon being Aquarius, this is tending towards your networking, okay? So your, fr your friends, socials, you know, uh, people that, that, 
you that you associate with, you know, associates as well, you know, so, and with Aquarius dealing with uh, this uh, astrology as well, and far out thinking, okay, so this is, you know, this is what the moon is being influenced by, okay, but with the sun being in Aries, you know, it's, it's again, it is 14 degrees, okay? So the Aries, 14 degrees, okay? So, yeah. It is in, it's actually in the second, second deacon, yeah. It's almost, yes, yeah, in that second deacon, so is dealing with that more of a sun influence, okay? Is dealing with the sun influence, making our sun being not only exalted, but being in that second deacon of Aries, it makes it more, I want to say creative for high octave, and dramatic for low octave, okay? Yeah, so that's how we react and respond, you know? So our actions and our vitality and our ego is Aries. You know, it's I am, head first. Passions, desires, willpower, okay? That's what Aries season is about. Spring as well, you know? Leadership, okay? So, yeah. So, moon, moon is also sextile and Mercury, okay? And Mercury is retrograde, I have to mention. That's a huge note on this video. Mercury is retrograde in Aries, okay? So, meaning that we're going to have to go back and reassess certain thoughts and ideas, you know, wh wherever house you got uh, Aries at, you're gonna be reassessing certain thoughts and ideas, certain actions. And yeah, this is certain a time for going, being the hermit type shit, a time for introspection. Okay, so, yeah, so moon is sextiling Mercury though, so this is the 60 degree angle to re to react, or op, what's it called, 60 degree, 60 degree for opportunities, okay, so, 60 so we react and respond towards thoughts opportunities to react and respond towards thoughts and actions that could be related to your passions okay We also have moon. Moon is also sextiling North Node and sextiling the Chiron. Okay, so this is the opportunity to react and respond towards your spiritual path head first as a leader. Okay. And the opportunities to react or respond towards a mistakes or wound or healing something or healing a wound that could be related to being a leader at this time or it could be related to your spiritual path <clears throat> <clears throat> because they're conjunct. North Node and Chiron are conjunct. Okay? So...
we have Mercury conjunct Neptune in Pisces. So this is the opportunities, the stargates, the gifts, the 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 trines, the oppositions to the squares as well. Okay, so two two you know towards Venus and uh, Neptune. So it's dealing with whatever seeds you planted and whatever house this is in and how it's playing out. You can tell if it's positive or negative in your life. If you look at it, you know, so it's when Neptune and Pisces conjunct. It, sh it should be a really exalted and harmonious, you know, Neptune and Venus, if I didn't say that. Okay, Neptune and Venus conjunct, you know, it, it's uh, in Pisces. So these two Pisces, Neptune is home and Venus is exalted. Okay, so and it's, and it's, it's going to be a really, you know, let's say time to really, you could be deluded or you know, you could shape this illusion into what you truly love at this time. You know, this is a time to really be emerged into what you love, you know? And you can see if it's playing positive or negative in, in and this is how you can tell if it's a, if it's playing out as a trine, you know, that would be the, the gifts, okay? If it's playing out as a opposition, That'll be obstacles. If it's playing out as a square, that'll be learning processes. If it's playing out as a, what's it called? What's the last one? What I say? I said trying. I said opposition. I said, hold on. <clears throat> okay, so in conjunction, misunderstanding, okay, and sextile, of course, opportunities, okay, so yeah, this is how it can be opportunities to, you know, really be, have this, it could be, it could be, uh, a partner that could be really romantic at this time you could you could so, sort of manifest or materialize or sort of be in the right time right place you know or it's like or it could be just something related to it's dealing with your love language okay and whatever house this is this is transiting so if you got this in your fifth house, if you got these two transiting in your fifth house and conjuncting there, depending on this individual spirit, again, you know, it could be playing out as, you know, you being, having opportunities, you know, to, and you're into, you know, sort of creating and being creative in whatever creative endeavors you're in. You could have doors open in that for you to acquire something pleasurable with something that you just create. You know, if you're a creator, you know, this is a good time for creators to really imagine and really dive deep into their imagination and create from there, you know, like they always do, but you will it's like Venus is exalted there. So it's like emotionally as a collective, our emotions and Venus being there, that is our, not heart chakra, but sacral chakra. Yes, that's Venus, sacral chakra makes what we love and pleasure, okay? You know, sort of, if you create from pleasure, you know, 
that's basically what this is it. This is the, this is telling you to do. Create from pleasure. Just create because you have the pleasure to create. You know, don't create from monetary gain, you know? So yeah. Mars is also going to conjunct Saturn and Pisces. So this is the trines, gifts, sextiles, opportunities, squares, oppositions, okay? Squares, learning process, oppositions, Uh, obstacles uh, 180 degrees so with this this is a uh, Mars and Saturn okay so with this it could play out positive and it could play out negative at the same time depending on the individual spirit but I'm gonna just say this they're both not where they want to be at Pisces They're just not where they want to be at Pisces, okay? So, with this, this plays out as, uh, uh, okay, so with Mars being here, it's, uh, makes our passions, okay, more, yeah, dealing with the romantics and dealing with the things that that has to do with the subconscious and love and uh jupiter as well so learning teaching expanding growing moving with the ebb and flow of these things okay so with this this is a uh, uh our passions, willpower, desires, motivations, uh, is, uh, filter out through, yeah, like I said, this, the Pisces aspect. And when it conjuncts Mars, and when it conjuncts, when it conjuncts, uh, Saturn, it makes, even though it hasn't conjunct Saturn, but this is what I've been explaining in my past videos. As soon as Mars got into Pisces, uh, it it's basically makes our dreams and our passions uh, kick in, you know, what's in our subconscious. It makes it, you know, sort of like move faster, you know? So, yeah, that's how that's going to play out. And Sun is going to conjunct North Node. Okay, so this this plays out as, a, you know, Sun is going to conjunct North Node in... That's going to happen tomorrow. Sun is going to conjunct North Node tomorrow. And that's basically, you know, the... This is eclipse eclipse, eclipse season, you know? So eclipse season is, is going to kick off April 4th, okay? So, and it's going to last throughout, towards, I think, certain days is going to peak and have certain energies. And uh, it's going to last towards, I think, the 26th or the 29th. Okay, one of them. So, yeah. Uh, so when it conjunct North Node, it makes it makes 
our actions more geared towards our spiritual path. Okay? So, yeah. And we'll be able to clearly be in the energies of what we truly, you know, know what we're here to do. You know, if you're not already, you know? So, yeah. And moon is... Squaring moon is squaring uh, Uranus and Jupiter. Okay, so with this, this is a uh, uh, the the obstacles ninety degree angle to react to react and respond towards growth. Okay, so you might face obstacles when you react and respond towards growth and expanding your monies and material at this time, okay? So yeah. And growing your fixed values, your possessions, your material and maternal. Okay? And so when we when you react and respond, you sort of like the obstacles is with the moon being in what's it called? Aquarius. You know, this is a uh, makes our emotions want to network again. So, you know, this could play out positive where you, if you network, you could be able to meet that right person, right, you know, and do and make things happen. But, you know, at the same time, you know, if you network, you could meet that wrong person and, you know, shit could go haywire but you know it's it's basically squaring and making it giving it a minor frustration or or not my yeah obstacles giving us obstacles at this time okay so if moon squaring uranus and taurus this is having uh uh obstacles when it comes to reacting and responding towards being a unique individual okay so with moon being in urine in uh, aquarius we are to feel you are to feel unique you are to feel like you can bring something unique to this world at this time so with this squaring uranus and taurus you know it's like this square could play out positive right if you express your uniqueness you could gain some sort of uh, gift, I mean, not gift, but what's it called? Material or maternal or monies at this time, okay? Or security, stability, and, and shelter, okay? If you don't have things like that at this time, okay? So, uh, yeah, we have... So we have a uh, moon in conjuncting black moon Lilith. Okay, so this is a uh, what's it called? The 150 degree angle for misunderstandings. So a black moon Lilith being in Virgo. This is a uh, the the misunderstanding when we react when we feel embarrassed when we sort of. When we react and respond in a unique way, and when we when we sort of associate ourselves, we might feel embarrassed about things such as Virgos, things such as like health, uh, day to day unique routine, how we schedule, how we plan, things like that. Okay, so yeah. That's going to be it. The first series sending out. Catch you next now.